Bailey, she's for Yonder Osborne, and this is Inside Exec. Today we're going to talk about raising your profile, and first of all we will need to ensure that you know how to identify your personal profile. It's how you are recognised, how you professionally want to be remembered or known when people are meeting you or when you're introducing yourself or when you're catching up with colleagues or associates for the first time or on many occasions. When I'm talking to people about public presentations, about talking in public, it's referred to as their audio logo, so just like with a graphic logo where you have something that is instantly recognisable as a particular brand, this is your way in two minutes and no more than two minutes of having a way of others recognising you, knowing it's you, establishing where you sit in the framework of, of what they're going to talk to you about or what you're talking to them about and it ranges in situations from that first introduction to presenting projects when you're looking for funding or for acceptance of particular work activities. It's a way of getting your thinking and preparing something in the back of your mind not to parrot off but main triggers for you to use when you're meeting someone. For example, you're in a workplace and you've got a key senior person visiting from another area or from another country. How would you use that opportunity? If you got that in the back of your mind, you're prepared, the first thing is you want to know that person. Although you may have read about them, read memos from them or whatever, you want to now connect with them at the personal level. So you might want to say hello, obviously introduce yourself, but also recognise, let them know that you know who they are and ask them a question. For example, I just recently read an article that you wrote or a paper that you send out. I found that very interesting or very provocative, be honest, whatever you, you want. And then they want to know who you are. So how do you want them to remember you? Yes, you're definitely a person that works in the organisation, but where and what and how you think. So again, through that maybe article, you find a point of connection, which you say, which bit you agree with or which caught your eye most. So you prepare for that situation. For another situation, it might be that you met someone who used to work with many, many years ago, and they, they, you see each other and, okay, there's two things you want to achieve in two minutes or even less, is where are you, what are you doing now, and where am I, and what am I doing? You'd communicate that with the view to if your paths cross again or opportunities come, then A, you raised your profile, and B, you built your network or re-established a network. It's hard, I guess, for us to think of that in preparation terms. We're far more likely to think, well, you know, I can just say what I like at that point in time and not to look at it as a, an opportunity for raising your profile, for presenting information, for, for it being an opportunity to talk in public. And I guess when I'm doing that with people, that is the hardest exercise for them to overcome, is to recognise that this is an opportunity for them to prepare something that even though they might prepare something, they need then to practice how to present that so it doesn't sound like it's just their little parrot speech that they spew out as, at the same time as they hand out a business card. But it is, it does replace a business card. It will sit in people's minds. If you do it well, it sits in people's minds and lasts for longer than a business card will because the business card just gets put in the business card holder or, or left in the coat pocket. Whereas a, an impressive audio logo or an audio introduction or a, a, a mini presentation of you and of your interaction with the person is going to remain with them, is going to raise your profile, is going to give you more opportunity to build on that and to do other things that will enhance your standing or your organisation's standing. The other thing is sometimes we are discouraged if we see someone who is either more senior or in the public eye but we know them or we have the opportunity to meet them. We think about their role and in some way or some people will get probably governed by that and get kind of intimidated and they, they feel awkward introducing themselves. I, I suggest the preparation will help you 
be more confident in, in that sort of situation and in the approach. And the most important thing is to remember, yes, they might be the Prime Minister, they might be the CEO, they might be the head school master from years gone by, but at the end of the day they are people too. And they like meeting people and they like you to, if, if you broke that ice and introduced them yourself, they'll be happy to meet you or rem remember you again. The other point is to say, well, I rather go through the discomfort of <laughs> doing that than walk away and say, oh, there was an opportunity lost. Yes, it's interesting that you mentioned the Prime Minister in that piece of information because what comes to my mind is a wonderful scene out of the inestimable Yes Minister where the, the Minister is looking at making some changes in the organisation and he's, he's just after a meeting where he's had other people from the department talking to him and there's one fellow there who has a suggestion that he wants to make and he makes his suggestion and the Minister says, uh, what are you? and the person who's making the suggestion doesn't understand the question and he says, um, Church of England. And the, the, the principal private secretary says, no, I think what the minister means is what do you do in the organisation? So you need to be clear about the information that you're giving. When, particularly if you're suggesting something, you do take up the opportunity that the person that you're talking to knows what your contribution is to that idea, you know, why you're making the suggestion and where it's coming from and, and who you are in the sense of that that person can place you in an organisation. They probably will know that you work there uh, and in a general sense where you might be positioned simply because of the suggestions you're making. But they need to know how to actually put you in their framework of how they see the organisation. So you've got to think of it in terms of of the information that they need from you when you're doing these these sorts of profile raising activities. I remember a story when I was early in my career and quite junior, a senior visitor came and was asking questions. I happened to be with another local senior person and they got introduced and say and then the person the visitor asked the local senior what level are you? And the person said, I'm a senior vice president. I hadn't really got hold of all this titling yet. And they said, oh, I'm Fuliana, what level are you? And I says, I'm on level 17. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the funny thing about that, I was absolutely embarrassed and humiliated later on when I realised I made a fool of myself. But for a number of years afterwards and after I got promoted within that organisation a couple of times, people referred to me as Level 17. <laughs> and I guess uh, I did make an impression. I got remembered, but got to be careful how. <laughs> so again, it's about preparation. It's about knowing what information you want that person to walk away with that will enable them to be in contact with you, to understand your contribution, your place in the organisation and the value that you can bring to situations that they might think of in the future. That's right. And that's why it's important sometimes to make it easier and connect very quickly. If you can have a common, something that is top of mind, something about whether there might be something happening in the organisation or in the marketplace, an article, an interview, anything that you, you know you both have watched and you have an interest in by virtue of your roles or backgrounds or whatever it may be and to quickly mention that and say well, well even if you say things like oh the jury's still out on that one I haven't made up my mind or I'm very interested in that and I'll be watching closely and uh, would love to hear your views at another time. So we're dancing fairly close to a question about when you do that and you're doing it with someone who is two or three levels more senior than you does it appear that in the great vernacular of this country you are brown nosing? <laughs> that you appear to be feathering your nest and, and looking for the main chance so that you can improve your standing in the organisation? Is it is it self serving? I guess is is the way it, is that the way it appears? And really, it doesn't matter how it appears to anyone else. It's how you are using that situation that's presented to you. And you'll excuse me if I just go off microphone for a minute because I'm going to sneeze. So Fuliana's going to talk while I do that. 
Yes, as um, Kim is sneezing. Um, I guess it's also when you're in a social context as well, when you meet other people, you really not, you don't know and you don't need to know where, where they're working and what level they are. You approach them because you're either doing the same thing at the same time, so you're going to the same play or you're watching a show or it's a meeting or gathering of, of some sort. Again, I always keep going back, they are people first. And, and their title and job is second. So try to get to know them and them know you as the person and the rest will follow. And I think at this point that I might get Fuliana to relate a story that I know that she can tell of her own experience about meeting famous people, about sitting next to a famous person at lunch and not really feeling like you deserve to be there and worried about what you're going to say in the conversation that is going to make an impression or make or not make you look stupid, I think, is, is probably more of the concern at that point in time. I know that at one point Fiona had lunch and sat next to Richard Branson. Yeah. And what would any of us say <laughs> if we were sitting next to Richard Branson? What do you think she said? Let's hear. <laughs> well, I don't think it's, it's what I said or didn't say. I, I think it was just a very, very normal conversation that any of you would have with anyone. I, I was there by accident. Uh, uh, somebody else was supposed to be there and I just happened to be there. It was just as easy so to, again, to you talk know, you, to. You need to be prepared because that is a situation when we're in senior executive roles that can be put upon us at any time. We do have to do the unexpected and fill in for people where we weren't expecting yeah. to do it. And so you will come across these situations. And the, the, the only bit that I remember is I was, we were talking and there was other people in the conversation as well. And the topic was about how sometimes, you know, uh, in a blink of an eye, it feels like, even though it might be 10 years, that your career has progressed and now you're doing all these wonderful things and you, you think about yourself and you say, oh, am I a fraud? Like, am I really doing this role? Because I, w I wonder would some, you know, will I wake up one day and people will say, you know, that was all a mistake, you're going back. And it was interesting and, and Richard said the same thing. He said, yep, that's not unique, that is very common and I get, that goes through my mind as well. And so the key is to say, have I improved day by day? Have I improved from role to role? Have I improved and learned from all those things. It's, it's just a very human thing to do, to, to think, am I as good as my now people recognise me to be? So you, you're second guessing yourself up to a point, but then you owe it to yourself to kick yourself back into touch and say, yeah, I got here because I, I earned it, without being arrogant, just factual. So importantly, what we have to remember is that it's the human thing to do. So mm. all yeah. of this is about human interaction, yeah. and everyone is human that you're going to be dealing with in the foreseeable future, although I don't get me on the topic of robotic change because there will be another whole podcast altogether about how your jobs are going to change and not be there and you're going to have to think about different things to do, but that's an aside. We are talking about human interaction, we are talking about everyone being a human, so whether it's, it's the people who work for you or it's the CEO or it's some other position of power, prestige or interest to you, it's still being carried out by a human being and they still have all of their misgivings. All, as well as all of their experience and all of their stature and all of their confidence. There's, there's a whole other journey that they're having that you don't know anything about. And I think Fuliana's got a great little story about Winston Churchill that she might share with us as well then. She's going to read it because she's having trouble remembering it. <laughs> Oh, the, the the story goes that Winston Churchill was um, meeting one of the young New Zealand airmen during the Second World War, and the airman had crawled out of the cockpit of a bomber uh, with an engine on fire and extinguished the flame. So very impressive. When Churchill met him, the the young man appeared very very nervous. So Churchill said, "You must feel very humble and awkward in my presence." And uh, when the, the man said he was, Churchill replied, then you can imagine how awkward and humble I feel in yours. And sometimes we forget that at, at a different level to this story is that, yes, it's one human being to another and therefore it is your personal brand and you must be consistent and respect that the other person also got their own feelings and brands and hopefully everybody 
want to project the best they can. So in every interaction, you know, you're thinking about raising your profile and having your way of giving your audio logo. The person that you're interacting with is also thinking about how they're going to impress you, how they're going to impress upon you their stature, their interest in what you've got to talk about, all of those things. And so it, by keeping it relevant and succinct and memorable, you're, you're both going to come away from that interaction with information that you can use. And really, like, for me, it is not about saying your name and where you work and what degrees you've got and how important you are. It's about, it really is about thinking about all the different situations and having different presentations for different situations and knowing when to use them, being comfortable about using them, having practiced them and rehearsed them and talked through them because it's no point thinking about it in your head and saying, well, in this situation, I'll say this without actually physically saying it. Because sometimes what we think in our heads we can't get out in words, even though it's quite clear in our heads. Same thing with writing it down. You write it down and then when you read it out loud it doesn't come out quite the same way because you've got to breathe and you've got to think about what you're saying, all of those things. So there's work involved in it, but in the long run it is about you being comfortable with the profile and the image that you are able to present in any situation. I think we've pretty well covered that up to this point. We might revisit it in some of the other podcasts that we do where it relates to the topic that we're talking about. But for today, that, that will do us. So I'm Kim Bailey, she's Pauline Osborne, and this is Inside Executive.